Okay, so welcome everybody to the uh, June Tech Talk, which we're um, doing a week early uh, because <laughs> next Thursday is the end of the financial year and we thought that wouldn't be so good for everybody. So um, we've we've got it a week early. We've got Ray Wang from Luca Plus with us to talk e-invoicing. Um, so we've been hearing about e-invoicing for quite a while um, and I thought it was time we did a bit of an update and see what's happening out there and um, uh, look at Luca Plus's solution. Before we dive in, um, for people who haven't been before, you are welcome to type questions in the chat box um, or the Q&A. Uh, we will get to them through the presentation if we can. Um, and if we don't, there'll be time at the end for um, questions. So um, just feel free to throw your questions in throughout if you like. Um, so over to you, Ray. Thanks for joining us today. No worries. Thank you so much. Thanks thanks for this opportunity, Joe. Um, yeah, so hi, guys. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here to present, um, uh, well, basically talk about e investing and also present uh, how we do things at Luca Plus. Um, so my name is Ray Wang. I'm a co-founder and the, the chief entertainment, uh, the chief entertainment officer, the CEO at, at Luca Plus. Um, I'm also coming from an accounting background as well. So I've been, before I ran in this startup business, I've been uh, doing accounting for almost 11 years. So here I am now because uh, I understand the pain points, understand um, how 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 basically how it works with zero MLB QuickBooks Online. So that's why I came up with this idea to build this business and to make life easier for accountants, accounting and bookkeeping professionals and also for business at the same time. All right, so let me share my slides first. Um, I, yep. um, and cool, all right. So yeah, that's about me and Luca Plus. So just have a little bit of fun first, right? Luca Plus, we aim to become the first accounting transaction guest process and paid on mass. Um, <laughs> that's great. Not too sure if you, yeah. Do we have a time frame sure for that, right? Are, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I should have, I should, I should have put that into, uh, into the uh, into this slide as well, right? So <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit fun because we, yeah, just an FI because we build, we actually build our system on blockchain. We don't really talk about that because um, we don't want to uh, sort of mislead people to make them think we actually doing this uh, cryptocurrencies business, uh, which we're not. So we purely just implemented this technology to make everything uh, uh, better and quicker. So yeah, um, so what we really do, uh, look at Plus, we actually help business to solve cash flow issues and save money and time uh, for them through our end-to-end -end cash flow management uh, system and also accounts receivable, accounts payable automation solutions. So yeah, that's what we do. Um, first, let's, Joe said, um, let's start with the, the top the, the topics we're gonna to talk about today, e invoicing. So um, I'll start with the question first. So how many of you guys actually, um, well, right, let's start with, a, maybe let's start with a quick quiz. So typing one in the chat box, if you have heard of e invoicing, and typing two if you never heard of it, and typing three if you already doing e investing with your customers and suppliers. Yeah, I'd like to hear the result as well, so I have a better understanding. Should have, of um, I should have set up a poll for you beforehand, but I, I don't know how to do that. Oh. Um, let's see. What uh, that's okay. My, got lots of lots of ones. Three, yeah, yeah, yeah two, right. mostly Ooh, ones. We have three too. Yeah. Oh, we have two, you never heard of it, that's fine. Yeah, oh, we have a couple of three as well. That's good to hear. Yep. But mostly, yep, yep. mostly right. double cool. one. Oh, okay, that's cool. Mm. Oh, good, oh, good. Cool. Yeah, we've been, right. look, it's been talked about for years, hasn't it? But I think, I think you know, we've been um, seeing a lot more recently from ATO and other communications and, you know, I'm I'm keen to hear from your perspective on why should we be getting on board with it now? You know, what's what's the you know the ATO is talking about it a lot. 
where are we at? Is it realistic for small business? You know, give us a, an overview of, um, you know, for accounting technicians, bookkeepers, BAS agents, accountants, uh, and small business, you know, I understand there's a lot of very big business that have adopted it, but for our clients, you know, why, what do we need to know? <clears throat> yeah, no problem. Sure. So yeah, um, for that, those are great questions, Joe. So uh, let me maybe explain a little bit, little bit uh, for those one that I actually never heard of e-investing before. So basically what it does is, um, so traditionally, when you send an invoice to your customer um, as a supplier, so you create an invoice, create an invoice in zero and or your purpose online, for example, um, create, after you've done it, click on the send button, they receive an email with um, a PDF invoice copy attached. So, and then they, as a bookkeeper, the two different ways um, or internal accountants, uh, normally, most of businesses actually adopt an OCR solutions with like DAX or um, HubDoc. So I read the data straight away from the PDF copy and then goes into your system. That's one way. Secondly, a lot of businesses still do manual transaction processing. Um, so you receive a PDF copy, manually tap the data into your accounting system. So that's a, that's a, that's the, uh, uh, the, the traditional way of doing uh, processing invoices. So the new way of doing e-invoicing um, is uh, same thing. You still raise or create an invoice in your existing accounting platforms. But the difference is, is once you click on a send button, um, your customer will receive that invoice, invoice data straight away into their accounting system. So they will still receive an email, but then, but, he, but, but here we're talking about the invoice data gets transferred across between different accounting systems directly. So once you click on the button, uh, where, uh, the receiver will receive that invoice data straight away into their accounting system. So basically that's what it is. Um, yeah, so uh, um, later on, I'll probably give you guys a, um, yeah, just, I'll, I probably won't do a live demo because today the network is a bit slow, but what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like uh, at the moment. Uh, when it's, uh, for the for the sender and for the receiver of um, e invoicing, so cool. All right. What about um, the, John, sorry. Uh, what about the security of that? You know, when you say it just goes immediately, how is that? Yeah. Uh, how, what's the security? How can? Why is that better than say emailing or other systems? You know, um, because that's yeah. part of what the, the ATO is talking about is that it is minimizing fraud, right? But how does that work? That's yeah, that's right. So where the fraud actually occurred is, uh, is uh, most of the time is um, when you receive an email from, um, let's say, someone trying to trying to act as your supplier. So um, I have a I have a pretty good story. There's a um, I think there's a, like a, a netball club in somewhere in West Australia. So they receive a a, a bill from uh, one of their contractors to do the renovation for their netball field, and the bookkeeper receives it. Uh, because everything else looks exactly the same as um, the way their, their subcontractors communicate and also send them an e a bill, like $20,000 bill to pay. So the bookkeeper goes, okay, that's fine. I'll just process it, someone I know, and then bang, the money goes into the hacker's bank account. Um, that's where the, uh, the invoice fraud happened the most because you receive an email with a PDF copy of the invoice attached with it. So you wouldn't think that's how it was actually coming from some, somewhere else. So what? So the differences between uh, that way and, e, and the receiving your bill as an e-invoicing is that uh, because all the business that enable sending and receiving e-invoicing um, solutions need to be registered uh, with their ABN, with their um, uh, this other other documents need to be provided as well. But then at the start, so definitely you need to register with your, with your ABN and you need to have a letter uh, from your, let's say, well, the, 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 we used to do that, that you need to have a letter from the business saying that you are actually the authorized person to register for your business. And also at the same time uh, to register with your business email uh, as well. So then the system can see, all right, you're not just coming from a randomly, randomly coming from somewhere else. It's really the legit business, like your accountants or bookkeepers or even the business owners trying to enable e-invoicing solutions for the businesses. 
So uh, that's that's a diff that's a uh, that's a major difference. Does that answer your question, Joe? Uh, yep, that's good, and we may yeah. get more cool. questions later on. Um, there's just yeah. a just a technical issue we've got going on here with your screen, and we're getting. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can see it at your end, but we're getting grey boxes kind of hovering over your presentation um, where the Zoom sharing settings are. Uh, yes, it's probably your chat window and your Zoom settings that are greyed out, but they're over the top of your presentation. I don't know if you've got another screen you can send them to. Oh, okay, yeah. What about now? Yeah, that's, you see got, the that's got rid of one. See if you can move the Zoom settings. Ah, I see. There you go. Better? Good. Thank you very much. Cool. Okay. All right. Carry on. That's a, that's a new thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> a new thing. It never, it never happened to me before as well. It's no. Cool. Thanks for that. Yeah. All right. So I'll just uh, move in. Um, just keep moving on. All right. So give you guys some industry updates um, of what the government's trying to do. So the current focus are definitely the, uh, uh, for this three um, industry sectors. So recruitment, recruitment agencies, technology service provider, uh, and professional services. So what, what it means is um, uh, like recruitment agencies, because the government uh, found out there's a lot of recruitment agencies send and receive high volume of the transactions. That's why uh, they are actually, uh, uh, like focus industry and technology. So here we're talking about um, different uh, software service provider like Zero, MLB, in uh, Kubus Online, or could be like SAP or um, or NetSuite, Oracle, that kind of um, uh, software service providers. Because as many of you, you probably know, Zero has enabled invoicing itself. Uh, in, uh, in MLB chose a dedicated partner, and then into Kubus actually. Um, is we are actually into a Kripus's partner to enable all the all the users send and receive invoices. So yeah, different software at the moment has a different approach, uh, which is fine as long as as long as that function uh, is enabled. So um, we yeah the government's uh, yeah the whole industry should be okay with that. So yeah, professional services um, it could be like accountants or bookkeepers or, or legal entities, um, and. Um, also, utilities provider because at the at the really beginning, um, the government actually uh, set up a, a round table with all this big service uh, business like service provider like um, Telstra, Bunnings, and also Energy Australia. I think Origin, yeah, was in the meeting as well to talk about um, um, enable to talk about enabling e invoicing for the larger business first. So that's why I think at the moment, utilities provider is actually one of the focus too. Um, yeah, and also large retail businesses. Um, for example, I'm gonna talk, yeah, uh, I was gonna talk about it later, but then um, here we can talk about the retail sector. Uh, Bunnings has already enabled sending e invoices to 30 of their credit uh, approved um, customers. So um, not too sure if, any of your, any of your clients' business or any of your business actually um, uh, accredited um, customers with Bunnings. So if you would like to find out more, certainly we can have, help you to find out if you guys doing a lot of transactions with Bunnings, right? That'll be that'll be a huge benefit because um, yeah. Um, so what's going to happen right now is when Bunnings send and bills, it directly goes into your accounting system. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to pay for it, but then at least it saves your time. Um, to manually pro manually process it, or uh, save your time to really set it up with your OCR system because it goes straight away into your system as as a bill to pay. Yeah, um, and um, going forward, future uh, future focus hospitality business um, and health, also construction, because right? th those are the ones that actually process high volume high volume of transactions and especially with larger businesses in those business sectors uh, they have a lot of um, clients or customers sorry uh, suppliers or customers that actually they, they transact with a, uh, with a lot so the, it, it, then it makes sense for them to um, to focus on that that those sectors 
talk and talk to those businesses and get those businesses to talk to their customers and suppliers to enable e-invoicing together. Uh, and I uh, also forgot to mention um, one huge business as, uh, in the retail sector. So um, Telstra also registered for Pebble already. So which means not far um, if, if any of your clients, same any of your business or your clients actually um, um, receive bills from Telstra, then yeah, it could be like an invoicing land into your accounting system uh, pretty soon. So um, yeah, that's any questions so far? Uh, oh, nothing, yeah. okay. nothing. Cool. Right. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, uh, we've got a question about yeah. slides. We we don't usually send out the slides, um, but I can talk about that with Ray later. Um, um, I don't know, Ray, were you planning on making the slides available? Usually we just put the yeah, recording. yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, okay. We we put yeah. the recording up on the AAT website, folks. For anyone who hasn't. Um, been to a tech talk before um, so you can always listen to the recording yep. again in future but um, uh, I'll work that out with Ray if, if we can put the slides up there as well um, yeah sure. no no problem at all so thanks yeah, nothing to hide so happy to share yeah mm. cool all right keep on going so yeah um, and um, so the government will certainly start with the larger businesses and uh, also for them uh, for themselves too. So we have uh, uh, yeah government agencies from federal government's um, size and also state governments, right? So the, as you guys, the, the, if you already know about um, e invoicing adoptions, sorry, if you already know about e invoicing technology, so um, it won't be uh, a strange uh, news for you anymore because the governments actually promise to pay you in five days if you send them an e invoice. Um, that's that's already ha already happening with federal governments, a lot of federal government agencies. So I think by July this year, um, in theory, so 100, all the federal government Commonwealth agencies are required to and to be able to receive e invoices um, from businesses. Um, so yeah, if you if you have any clients or your 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 clients' business or your business is actually um, doing any project work. With government agencies, especially uh, the federal Commonwealth level agencies, yeah, definitely have a chat with them because they will get paid in five days. Does, it, does anyone here deal with government that that um, and have you heard about that? Are they giving you information? Are they telling you that it's available? I'd just be interested to know. Put it in the chat box. No one yet. Okay. Mm, that's right. Yeah, so I have one. Cool. Act, so which industry um, is that your client's business or your business? Is there a cost associated with using e invoicing? Yes, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll come to that as well. Later on, yeah. So federal government clients. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, that's right. We there's um yeah we we also received quite a lot quite a lot of uh, uh, inquiries about um, sending e invoices to federal governments as well. So like, like the other day, um, we've got a user that's actually using Intuit QuickBooks and uh, they do translation services and they plan to send e invoices to uh, service of Australia. So yeah. Uh, and also the other day we do have a, another another one some um, Intuit Cripples two uh, I think they are yeah they're recruitment agencies so yeah cool all right keep on going so yeah talk, um, talk, talking about federal governments and now state governments um, I think uh, the, the 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 king one is actually New South Wales governments so they actually are really early adopted so. They will also have a similar mandate as what federal governments promised um, to uh, get all the um, all their um, come, oh, well, all their local local governments agencies to enable invoicing solutions by July this year. So, but obviously, I think it actually takes time. Uh, other states probably have different plans. 
uh, depending on the priorities um, in the next couple of years to adopt e-investing solutions. But um, you know, it won't be that long for your local councils to join and provide uh, e-investing channel support uh, for all the um, small, medium-sized business community. Yeah. So that's, that's what's been happening with the federal uh, governments and the state governments level. Yeah. Any business, uh, any questions so far for this, for the uh, federal governments and state governments receiving e-investing e from, uh, from businesses? No? Okay, cool. All right. Right. So now for businesses, right? Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, so larger business are certainly adopting it much quicker. Uh, like, I meant, like I talked about before, Bunnings have already started sending invoices to their 30 credit customers. So yeah, again, if you, if you're, if you know anyone or uh, if your client's business is one of them, yeah, feel free to have a chat with us or uh, anyone else. We're happy to find out for you. Um, and small businesses certainly, um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, very, very slow um, onboarding because I guess uh, from what we experience, most of the small business are already using uh, things like uh, DAX, receipt banks, HubDoc to to process e invoices, uh, to process their PDF copy invoices. So they can't really see a straight benefit uh, by doing things differently, but from cost protective, uh, perspective, e-invoicing is probably much more um, cheaper, uh, let's, put, let's put it that way. Uh, especially later on when, the, when there are more and more businesses start adopting, enabling sending and receiving e-invoicing, uh, e then yeah, that, that is kind of like a, how it works with the mobile phones, right? Using uh, Apple phone and, uh, and uh, Optus is your uh, network service provider, and if you if you're using uh, like an Android phone uh, or or one plus phone, then you use you with uh, Telstra. Uh, it doesn't stop you to send and receive messages or making phone calls, right? So a similar concept to e-invoicing as well. It's purely like making phone calls, sending messages uh, through um, your mobile phones, and your accounting software will be like your mobile phones in that case, and uh, service provider. Network service provider like us will be uh, similar to you know, Chelsea and Optus. Yeah, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, cool. Um, and so far, from what we can see, uh, is there are about fifteen thousand businesses that registered to uh, to enable sending and receiving e invoices on the PayPal network already. Um, and so, yeah, so the, uh, we're getting there. It's still slower than what we expected, but then yeah, 15,000 business have registered so far. Uh, yep, that's including, like I mentioned before, Bunnings, Telstra, and so we have about uh, 600 businesses registered for our, uh, through our uh, networks, uh, sorry, through our platform. And um, yeah, there'll be, there'll be more and more because especially for Intuit QuickBooks users, we, as I mentioned before, we help Intuit QuickBooks to enable um, all the users to send and receive e Pebble e invoices. And also another good news is not too sure if you guys heard of that in the uh, federal government's, uh, like the federal budget, budget announcement before. Um, so I think uh, next financial year, if any business spent money on the um, educations for to, to learn more about things like cybersecurity, e invoicing technology. Um, apparently, you get 120% uh, tax deductions, which means if you spend $1,000 on the uh, e invoicing education, um, you get 1200 bucks for your tax deductions. That could be another a good benefit for the businesses, right? It's always good to have a, um, more tax deductions, right? That's a, mm -hmm. uh, all these good things, pay less tax, yeah. But nothing has been, uh, nothing in details has been released yet, but we definitely see this coming out later on. Yeah, uh, we do have a few questions, right? So what happens if you change accounting package? How do you manage the ATO required to retain for the documents? Yeah, so if you change accounting package, um, all the, yeah, so that's, that's a tricky question. For example, right with with zero, if you enable sending and receiving, uh, if you register your Apple ID with zero, uh, and then if you decided to change the MRB or into a QuickBooks, yes, unfortunately, you have to first 
deregistered with zero, but that's easy now. Uh, I think normally just either send me an email or click on button uh, and then register again with your current accounting um, platform, um, could be MRB zero, uh, into your QuickBooks or anything, right? And um, how do you manage the ATL requirements for retention of documents five years to keep the invoices? Um, look, we, we don't, so all the documents and, and data still will get stored into your accounting system. Um, so, and, and also, yes, that's, that's probably a, um, not, uh, I wouldn't say a mistake. So people actually have a wrong impression of saying that, uh, well, ATO is promoting it. Does that mean that uh, ATO will have a, the right and also the way to look at the data um, when they want? The answer is actually no. So they actually basically help them to promote this um, idea. It's like a caretaker rather than, um, yeah, a dictator, dictator, dictator right? Saying, so, yeah, I want to do this, I want to see that. Yeah. I'll so, just um, yeah, so, uh, I'll just answer that question as well. Um, uh, if you change accounting package, Tracy, um, and anyone else who's interested in that, um, the accounting package will store it for the statutory amount of time. So even if you stop paying the subscription, it's still stored in the accounting package. And let's say you were audited a few years after the you stopped the subscription, you just pay for a month or however long you need to access the documents while the audit is going on. Um, and that way you can activate, uh, you know, the file and get access to everything that's stored within it. So if you stop your subscription, the, the accounting software is still bound to keep all of your records for that statutory period. Um, and as Ray said, if you've got a bunch of e-invoices in there, they will automatically be there as well. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, another aspect about the ATO, though, I think we're interested in is, um, you know, they're really um, encouraging people to adopt it. Is there any um, expectations that they will make it mandatory at some point? I mean, they've kind of, you know, like they've got that system with the government where they're saying if you got an invoicing with a government department, they'll pay you in five days. So that's a, you know, um, that's a good incentive. But what about for business? Do you think they will mandate it at some point? Um, to be honest, no one has that answer yet, even themselves. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, but yeah, but I don't, to be honest, I don't see that will happen in the next, at least um, a year or could be, you know, in two years, right? Uh, but I have a feeling, but again, this is only my uh, personal uh, personal view. So it will probably similar to single touch payroll, right? It will start with larger business first. They say, right, business turnovers from this and that need to uh, uh, enable sending or receiving e-invoices. E uh, I think that's probably, yeah, from like what I can see, that's probably um, um, what's going to happen in the, in the market. So that's why I like Bunnings, right, uh, already enable sending invoices. Uh, and, uh, well, next could be, not too sure, well, Chelsea are already registered or maybe office work or things like, or things like that, right, larger business. Because for them, it'll be much easier uh, to really get the receiver to see the benefits uh, because first, you know, like Bunnings or, uh, or, or um, Office Works, they are already a trusted brand and trusted businesses uh, to a lot of the um, business customers. So, yeah, I would just, um, yeah, that's why this probably makes more sense to start with them rather than um, saying, yeah, you know, uh, we want to mend mend that um, today, right? That won't make any sense. And also, especially for a lot of um, uh, businesses, um, the, the, the uh, changing the, from the traditional way to the e invoicing way is actually not as easy as how it sounds, right? Because we, especially for a lot of businesses, they already have a system, already have a process. So it's not like, a, all right, um, um, get my zero to enable my zero into a quick to receive e invoices and then I can get the things done next day. So um, yeah, that's, I, that's why I think um, yeah, certainly it will take time. Yeah, won't, won't happen straight away. So you don't have to don't have to don't have to be panic. So yeah. mm. 
Bunnings using link four. No, Bunnings is actually using uh, in, uh, zero to enable sending and receiving, uh, sending invoices. Yeah. Can I be Mondays? Imagine the orders were still in business. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's another one. See, that's that's actually a challenge that um, what ITOs found as well because one of the challenge why the e-invoicing adoption is slow is because many businesses actually still, I think according to the research, about 400 businesses still um, um, doing their books without an accounting software. Right? They, they, they basically record everything on an Excel sheet. So that's a, that's a good question. How, how are they gonna enable sending and receiving invoices, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, so I'll keep on going. Right. Okay, I'll stop sharing. So after, yeah, after we'll talk about a lot of stuff, maybe it's time to sort of let you guys see uh, what it looks like when you send and receive invoices, right? So I'll stop sharing. All right, and then share my browser. So yeah. Cool. I will do an example for zero MLB and Coupons Online because the other one that we first done the integration with. Um, but I won't talk too much details for zero and MLB because um, yeah, they've already enabled e-investing themselves through different ways, right? But I'll still briefly show you guys what it looks like. And uh, and later on, I'll also, also talk about the way we plan to build, especially for receiving e invoices in the future uh, on how different um, it, it is to um, the, the current stage. Right? So for zero, that's what I said before, um, sending e invoices hasn't been changed. I know a lot of people, including myself, actually don't like this um, these invoicing, this invoice um, template. So I much prefer the classic invoicing, but um, the the classic e invoicing, you won't be able to see uh, any e invoicing sending information. Uh, yeah, so the internet's a bit slow today. Anyway, maybe I'm yeah, I yeah, uh, I'm with you, Ray. I prefer the classic, but uh, yeah, you have to use the new invoicing if you want to do e invoicing in zero. Yep. Mm. That's right. Correct. So uh, yeah, so. It, oh, yeah, we'll be able to switch back. Oh, yes, I can. Okay, yeah, that's the old way. And to send the invoice in zero, uh, you have to change that template to the new one. And um, if, not too sure if many, many of you actually uh, have seen these buttons on the bottom right corner called send us an e invoice. All right, once you click on that, You'll be able to send all your. Uh, uh, you'll be able to send this invoice as an e invoice, uh, and every single time, unfortunately, with zero, you have to. If you want to send an e invoice, you have to do this manually. Right? Well, it's not. I know it's not very user friendly, especially if you have like a twenty of invoices you want to send as an e invoice. Uh, but um, I'm sure they they probably will make a change later on when the adoption is actually much higher. So. Yeah, that's basically uh, how zero send e invoice and how 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 I actually receive it. Um, so if you go to the bills section, so everything is going to land into this draft section. Yeah, I'll take that as an example. So yeah, same thing when your supplier sends you an e invoice, you you don't have to manually type in everything. Basically, it just lands into your system, uh, where it's from, the build dates, due dates, mm -hmm. reference number, description, uh, and the price, and whether it's got GST or not. Uh, I think that at the moment, the only difference is you have to manually change which account you will like that uh, transaction goes into. So, and then click on proof. That's it. Uh, yeah. And then you have a PDF copy attached with it regardless. So, Technically, you don't have to rely on anything com that coming from the email anymore. Any questions so far? But obviously, you still get the the chance to approve it. So you you um, 
so it goes into a draft Correct. you have but you have to manually enter the account um, accounts yeah. yeah so if you were dealing with a lot of bills that could be somewhat annoying <laughs> um mm. yeah but i guess it's a way of eyeballing every um every bill and making sure there are no duplicates or you know um unauthorized ones so maybe it's good practice but yeah. as you say, the software will evolve it over time i guess um uh we've got your yeah. flying gray boxes again ray <laughs> oh is it yeah <laughs> Over the zero. Screen. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, all right, <laughs> cool, cool. I'll move it to the other side. Yeah. Because I've got three different screens uh, in front, set up in front of me. I think that's why I have to work it out. Okay, I'm present, presenting in this screen and I'll move it to the other one. No, that's fine. All good. Yeah, cool. Uh, basically, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the uh, the questions I we yep. have received. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. That set up, let's just see how it set up initially commissions before anything sent to receive is set down in Luca plus software well i mean with zero uh, we don't yeah we don't help zero to enable e invoicing um, um anymore because they there's no point because they 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 do it themselves right so but how it works is i think is um because these demo accounts we have already enabled e invoicing solutions already uh, but if you if you want to see what it looks like i think First, in the um, oh, there's already already a draft. Yeah. So once you click on the send as e invoice, if you haven't registered for, for Pebble e invoicing yet, there will be a window pop up in the middle asking you to enter your ABN, enter your business uh, information, and also enter your same thing, enter your um, email, a uh, business email um, as well. And then you click on the submit button. They send the information to the Pebble network to register the Pebble ID, ID, Pebble ID for you. And once that's been done, then you will be registered um, uh, with Pebble to send and receive e invoices in zero. Um, and yeah, same, same, yeah, similar process uh, as what we do at Luca Plus. I can certainly show you guys later on. Uh, what else? So, recruitment agencies, how can I add timesheets with in with in invoice? Um, that's a good question. I, I think first, I just I assume your system will actually link with, uh, like let's say maybe zero MLB or QuickBooks Online, right? Uh, and then once you you approve that timesheet, uh, I create and same same process. If that's the case, uh, I create an invoice in zero or or into QuickBooks, and then yeah. Just send it an e invoice. Um, so you mean you manually mm -hmm. attach the timesheets to the draft invoice? Is it? Oh, to attach timesheet. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a tricky one. So the time, depending on what sort of um, timesheet we're talking about here, if, if it's a PDF copy, <laughs> if it's PDF copy, it certainly can 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 send through the Pebble network. But if it's Excel sheet. Uh, I'm not too sure. I never tried it before. Um, before we can, we can. So I, I tested it before. So with PDF and Excel sheet, we can not, we can certainly send it out uh, uh, with the with the transactions. But I'm not too sure because I never tested it with zero or even MLB. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, there's no problem with attaching other documents to the draft invoice because it, it's not going to be sent out without you entering that general ledger account and without you approving it. Correct. Right? So you have to look at it, and that's when you can attach any other documents. But um, yeah, yeah, so there's there's no problem with that. Um, yeah. What about the question about you know email address or unique ID? That might be more obvious in your Luca Plus system is it rather than in zero or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I can certainly show you how uh, how we do uh, how we help business to register Pebble in our system later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you give Bunnings office work your email addresses or is there a unique ID or something? Now you don't. Um, yes, you do. You don't need to. Um, uh, so. 
So like, you, you, you don't actually need to provide anything to your supplier because as long as, long as you registered uh, Pebble ID already, and when they click on the send button, um, at the moment, how, it, how the Pebble system works is they identify businesses through ABNs and also the other uh, registration information that you send to the Pebble uh, network. So, which means, because uh, I'm, I'm sure Bunnings will know who they send it to. So once they put your ABN uh, or your business information in their accounting system, um, the Pebble network will actually automatically automatically attack, uh, search your information in the network system. So if everything match, then you'll be able to receive the uh, the bills from Bunnings or Office Work later on. Yeah. So that registration that is really mm -hmm. just a, it's a very quick process. Like if you if you it sent is. me an invoice as an e invoice, in order for me to receive it that way, I just have to register um and that's that just with my abn and then i can receive it and it's a it's a once-off process isn't it correct that's right it's a once-off process mm -hmm. yeah and then it gives you it will give you it will, uh, yeah it'll give you a paper id um once that's been done as well uh, and that's probably something you can give it to finding or office or office works um later on yeah not too sure about how they actually adopt this process to be honest but um but as far as i know Technically, once uh, yeah, your business registers for Pebble, the system should be able to automatically find you in the network. Then you should be able to receive everything from your uh, suppliers. Yeah, yeah well, that's a good question them. here about the end of month statement. I mean, if, you know, so would would a supplier still send their statements via email, but they would send all of their yep. invoices by e-invoice? so correct um, yeah so you would so it's not getting rid of email communication completely it's only taking over the invoicing part so that so your suppliers would still email a statement separately that's mm -hmm. right yeah okay yep and i have another question is when uh, uh zero attached it to suppliers when sending it to your two boxes oh uh, that's just about the attachments yep that's um, okay. Yeah. Cool. I think we do have a uh, counting software provider wizard set up for registration, for registration people. Uh, I think yes, it will. That's that's actually part of a plan we have uh, to build something with into a QuickBooks because we do receive some information. Uh, we receive some feedbacks from our users. Um, they certainly need some more information about how to set up uh, or register people in into a cripples through Luca Plus. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Then we'll receive another request for that, All right? Doesn't sound so attractive, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It de really depending on what you need, right? So um, yeah, there's no, yeah, certainly there's a uh, no not solutions gonna be for everyone, for everybody. Right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, but the attractiveness yeah. is all about, as I understand it, and from what I've seen so far, um, it, it, when you're big enough, it does save a lot of time in the processing, and it also um, minimizes the risk of uh, fraud, basically. So that's the big attractiveness in and uh, and time savings. Um, yeah. Once set up, it is very straightforward. It's like anything, you, you know, you attend to the details in setting it up, but then it really is very simple to use um but yeah it's really it's only for the invoicing um exchange mm. it's not taking over every communication between customers and suppliers yeah that's right yeah cool and um uh, yeah got a right. question here from um rebecca if each of your e invoices needs to be manually sent from zero what happens if invoices were generated in a feeder database I presume that means in some sort of add-on um, that integrates with zero. Does that mean e-invoicing is not available? I'm not sure. You might need to clarify that, Rebecca. Do you mean if invoices are generated from another system and then integrated into zero, or are you wanting to e-invoice from the other system? Maybe just clarify that yeah. for us. Um, but yeah, go on, Ray, because um, we're... Yeah. Um, we've managed to get through 45 minutes already so <laughs> um sure. yeah 
it's all right. Yep. Maybe maybe no it's problem. better to have a look at you know your system because it's built to be integrated with QBO. Maybe we should be looking at that. That's right. Yeah, yeah cool. Sounds good to me. Um, I'll move that <laughs> box away to avoid that uh, great box issues. Yeah, so I'll lock things quickly, lock into our system, local class, beautiful website, all right, log in. Uh, let me think on this probably this account show you guys what to show you guys what it looks like on the platform um, yeah so to register people it's quite easy um, the way we do it is basically can you guys see there's a register for Pebble button here? Yeah. So all we ask is your ABN and also your uh, business information and also your email. And uh, there'll be a window pop it up. I think I already registered. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's penny. Yeah. It's not a window pop it up. But but then yeah, as long as you enter all the basic information here. Uh, and um, then we can help you to register PayPal, e PayPal ID, register PayPal ID for you. Yeah, this is nice and simple and easy because we, we most of the time we get the data from your accounting system anyway. So it's really minimum effort to register your PayPal ID uh, through us. And for Intel QuickBooks, how send and receive e invoice? I will have to stop sharing, show you another screen quickly. Uh, where is it? There it is. Move all the gray box. Cool. Can you guys see the Intuit page? Yeah. All right. So same thing. When you send, oh, I have to log in. So um, the way we, we enable business to send and receive e invoices is a little bit different, um, which I'll show you pretty soon. Using that, that example, rolling eyes on into a QuickBooks. So we don't, actually, we don't actually make any changes. So you, same thing, you still create invoice in into a QuickBooks. Uh, and, um, and then once you've done that, I'll take this invoice as an example. All right. Maybe I'll create a new one. Right. So see, there's no button in into a QuickBooks here. Basically, you still follow this, the, this, the same way, send, create and send and save. So um, how the way we do it differently is uh, once you save and send your invoice, we will automatically detect whether first your business enables sending e invoices. Uh, I'm talking about paper e invoicing, uh, e, uh, paper e invoicing here. So, and then if you have if you have registered for us, uh, then great, we'll send that information to your uh, to um, to the Pebble network, and then uh, we will also aut automatically identify if your receiver um, has enabled receiving Pebble e invoicing or not. If they have, bang, straight away, we'll just put that information into their accounting system. Um, and if they are not, um, and uh, we will send you an email saying that, yeah, unfortunately, your customers actually hasn't enabled receiving e invoicing yet. So yeah, we'll do let people know. Yeah, so that's, then, it, that's the difference. Is it, is it up to us to say, um, to contact the customer and say, hey, we'd like to start e-invoicing, you need to register, or do you send them a message or the, you know, the system, do they get a message to say, you know, we'd like you to register for e-invoicing? How does that work? Yeah, they do. So for, so they only, they only receive that email from us uh, first time after you enable sending e-invoices and then send the e-invoice to uh, your customer. So we'll, we'll, after, you, after, you, after you send an invoice to them, we will at the same time send an invoice to your customer saying that, hey, 
uh, company EMB has enabled uh, sending payable invoicing through Luca Plus. And if you would like to receive your invoice data automatically into your accounting system, please also en enable uh, receiving e invoicing. Could be through us or could be uh, through your current software software providers. Okay. They do yeah. receive a notification. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. And then the also what we do, what we help business to receive e invoices at the moment. Unfortunately, with Intuit QuickBooks, because as many of you probably already know, they don't have a draft section. And the moment, the way it works is when they receive it, uh, it will just automatically land into your system. But it won't go into any accounts uh, straight away. We will automatically create a Luca Plus clearing account. So all the e e invoices that you receive uh, going forward will land into this account first. So as a bookkeepers or internal accountants, uh, basically just jump into your um, chart of accounts and then see what's in there. Uh, and then change the, the categories into the one that you prefer. Um, but 90% of the information will get into anyway. So the supplier's name, build days, same thing, due dates, invoice number, description, amounts, and whether it's got GST or not. So that's the only thing that you need, you need to do. Um, that's, uh, that, could be, yeah. that could be pretty annoying for um, invoices with a lot it of is. lines in the one transaction. It is that. That's why we plan to make a change. Mm. Uh, I will, which I will sh stop sharing here, and then jump back to my slides. One second to show you what we plan to do going forwards. There's my slide here. Let's bring it through. So just um, Rebecca's come back to us. Um, so invoices are generated in an industry-specific client management system. And then uh, mm. fed into zero. They're fed into zero. You yeah. Send either from the feeder or zero. It, so zero, obviously, well, yeah. that's fine. It doesn't matter whether it's um, well. Actually, I don't know. Let me. I'll let you speak to that. How does that work with a, an integrated add-on? Yeah. So th see, that's it. That's also a tricky one as well. But I'll answer your question first. Um. So it really depends on whether your business plan to send those invoices from zero or from that uh, the feeder. Uh, if it's from zero, then yes, uh, those, uh, the, those invoices can be sent as an e invoice. But with the feeder, if it's with the feeder, then you, have, you really have to see whether they have enabled sending e invoices or not. Mm. Uh, if they haven't, then nah, it won't work. Mm. Uh, mm. That's, that's a tricky one because, for example, uh, with a lot of... Um, businesses like especially for accounting firms and bookkeeping firms um, they, they send invoices through uh, practical emissions right and uh, not for zero uh, but I don't think practical practic emissions uh, has enabled sending invoice, e invoices yet I was talking to the CEO and it's not even on their roadmap for at the moment because uh, they can't see the points right but uh, hopefully uh, um, uh, have nothing, nothing's been confirmed yet, but hopefully we can, we, we might be able to help them, help them out. Uh, but we'll see. All right. So, All right. So yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, we've only got a few minutes left, so we need to cover. Um, you know, what is the cost, and also just you know, recap. Like, you know, if you, what what do you think is the top reasons that you know bookkeepers, accountants, small business should be getting on board with this? Oh, no problem. Sorry. All right. Let's talk about cost. For, first, for zero, a, a, everything's included into your subscription. So it doesn't cost any extra. But for MLB, um, I think it costs about $50 per year, uh, which is quite cheap. And for Intuit QuickBooks, it doesn't cost anything as well. Um, yeah, because they partner with us uh, and we don't charge anything for e invoicing. Uh, so we only charge people money for the accounts receivable or the payable automation later on and also look at pay transaction fees because we do have a payment platforms uh, that we help business to solve short-term cash flow issues yeah yeah and uh just quickly 
like I said before, so the new way of we helping business enabling receiving invoices uh, is we will get all the transactions parked at Luca Plus platform first. So as a bookkeeper, as accountants, you can get into our Luca Plus platform to prove it if everything's correct. Then it goes into your accounting system as a bill to pay rather than straight away into your system. And then later on, you can actually get the get the uh, get Luca Plus to memorize. All right, so um, I will just want this um, Globax Corporation to um, to send bills into my rent uh, accounts going forward, so we can help businesses to do to do that too to achieve um, yeah autom uh, fully automation and also have a approval for building as well. Right, so that's the difference. Rather than goes into the accounting system straight away. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, yeah, so what's the other questions, Jory? Um, just one last question. Um, Jessica says she registered mm -hmm. on July 2021, hasn't had one supplier send an e-invoice. Um, you said earlier how many businesses have actually registered. Was it 15,000? 15,000. 15, 15, 15, yeah, about 15,000. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out of yeah. what hundreds of thousands of businesses in Australia. <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah, we have like we have like two point two point four million. Uh, 2. Oh, there you million, go, two point four uh, million. Business. So we've got a long yeah, way to so go. So it's still a long way to go. Um, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, interesting. I feel like we've been hearing about it for years, but it's still um, still really quite small, isn't it? Um, so yeah. what we can do, businesses. what we can do. Yeah, what just, we can do also is uh, just doing just help, just doing a, fa a favor for you guys. If you would like to uh, find out whether your customer or suppliers enable invoicing or not, uh, shoot me an email. We can actually check it out in the network system for you. Uh, so let you know whether they have or they haven't. Um, yeah, okay, if that's right. if yeah. that's that help you guys. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. Well, we'll put your email in the up with the recording so people can contact you if they want some more info um mm -hmm. or any of those questions like you know the the add-ons and integrating with other systems um and um you know how the automation works which we didn't really get time to cover um so we may need to do that in a whole separate session in the future um because there's a whole other aspect of Luca Plus, which manages um, automation of accounts payable and receivable, isn't that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, the, the, yeah. Mm. we we might have to do that the, another the, time. <laughs> um, that's fine. That's fine. No problem. And so, what's what's this for? Our, our little barcode thing of me here on the screen. Oh yeah, just, if you like to. Yeah, if you like to. Yeah, if you'd like to hear more uh, about what we do, for example, right, I would look at pay how we how we help business to solve short term cash flow issues and uh, other uh, API automations. Yeah, feel free to scan mm. a QR code and then book a time with me. Mm. Okay, great QR code. That was mm. the term I was looking for. <laughs> um, yeah. And yes, uh, they they. I'm sure you do have support for your users. Um, just oh, that question yeah. there. Um, so I think we've got through all the questions. Um, they'll, um, yeah, so uh, thanks for that update, Ray. Um, and yeah, we didn't get to look in detail at all the software, but you know, they've all they've all the major ones have got have at least got it activated um, and yeah, you know, ready to use. Um, so it'll be interesting to see yeah. how it keeps evolving over the next couple of years. Yeah, definitely. And also, if you guys really would like to try it out, we do have a uh, we do offer a free trial account. Uh, feel free to sign up, and then um, let me know if you have any questions. That's a free account with Luca Plus, is it? For, Correct. Yeah, that's for right. Testing yourself. Okay. Well, yeah. that's great to know. So, um, we'll we'll put that up in the on the website as well um, with the recording. So. Um, yep. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Ray. Um, and we will see you all back here next month. No worries. Thank you, okay. guys. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Thanks, and, Ray. Yeah, see you next time. Okay. Right. Enjoy your day. You too. Yeah.